the difference between praying in your head and praying out loud. I never, I was never much of a prayer. I never was a outwardly praying out loud person, let alone not having social anxiety around people it's and I've never been a public speaker didn't even go to high school because I was a criminal on the run and the place I ran from had my records to, to school so in order for me to enroll in high school I would have to get my records and the records I couldn't get them because I was on the run between 14 and 16 getting locked up in Slayton Farms buying my PA and uh, doing like a month and then running getting out of there getting caught two years later, going back, staying there. In a, less than a year, getting out, getting my GED. And then it was one teacher that told me about the trade school that I can go to for free. So I listened. And nobody else was saying anything except for that guy that wasn't even his job to tell me that. But it's just word of mouth from the right person at the right time had something that helped me with my future which is carpentry now when I went into the school I didn't even mean to take I didn't even mean to be a carpenter because being an architect was my first choice second choice carpentry third choice was cabinet making I had to take the algebra test in order to become an architect and I didn't know that so I just took the basic math test because I took the basic math test they put me in um, my second choice which was carpentry so instead of being behind the computers in the beginning just putting stuff together two years in that school I get out and yeah I started out at 750 an hour and I had a degree, two-year degree, back in 96. And I thought, that's, I mean, that's kind of low, but all right, whatever. I got my job. So I go in, and I work, and I learn, and I ask questions. And I started to do more work than the people that were there for years on end and the ones that made twice the amount of money that I did. Like $17, $18 an hour they were making. And I got to a point where I'm, I'm motivated to learn and I know I have the ability to grasp what I'm seeing and what I want to accomplish. And what I wanted to accomplish was knowing what they knew knowing what they know but knowing it now while i'm young not while while i'm their age and i want to take what they know and then keep rolling with more information to get things done more efficiently and so i would work fast when it comes to trim work you can you can move quick non-stop 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 the job i have now is different the job i have now is it's more like is it is the time it's like that it's not a healthy mindset because when you're a subcontractor you have your own you do your own thing. You you are your own boss, even though you're still working for money, but you you answer to yourself. 
And if you don't get the job done, you don't get paid and that's it. And that's the way it is. You don't have anybody over your back. You don't have anybody clocking you in to see if your time is dead on with what they've been keeping a track of, of you with. And if it isn't dead on, then you probably won't get your check every week. So we'll just kind of, you know, just pretend we forgot to pay you because you, uh, you might have added a couple minutes or so, or maybe a couple hours during the week. I mean, during the, uh, yeah, during the week. Like, has anybody ever over-clocked your time or under-clocked it? My rule of thumb was like this. When I hire people, from the time they got to work and unloaded their tools, as soon as they unload their tools, from the time that they're finished loading their tools, they get paid. If they work eight hours, or if they work nine full hours and they took an hour lunch break or eight and a half hours. If you take a lunch break, I want you to feel like you're appreciated while you're taking a break from working for me. Not hurry, 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 move, move, move. Get it done, I don't care. Take. It's like lunch is on me. Every day lunch is on me. If you're getting paid $25 an hour, even if you're getting paid $10 an hour, every day that you come to work, lunch is on me. So I, I at one point I had like 10 different people working with me, family members, stepmom, brother-in-law, cousins, brothers, nephew, and then other contractors. And I, and I enjoyed it because I was remodeling his apartments. I said the story a thousand times. The guy was setting me up with my, my the poking holes in my pipes, trying to, trying to get me out of there because I, because I made him do his job. But I came onto his land just like I did now with uh, being on YouTube. I just realized I don't have a time limit. And again, just by setting this up, this little thing here, it's way more convenient. It's just because everything's at my fingertips and I can easily pause something with a, you know, um, it doesn't have a sound. It's silent. I love that. Anyway. What I'm getting at is when it comes to work, you want to feel like you're appreciated at the job. And you don't want to you don't want to feel like somebody's always checking up on you to see what's going on. When I first started work, getting out of school, I didn't I didn't like taking a break. I just wanted to I Whatever I was doing, I, because it can keep you busy. This job here, it keeps you busy, but it's in a way different sense where you're constantly looking for something that's, you're trying to grab some material and it's just, it's never the way that it needs to be. So, but when it comes to trim work, it's a speed, it's a system. It's me and my brother used to race each other because I used to hire, I'd hire him and I'd pay him a hundred hours to run the baseboard in a four bedroom upstairs with a hallway. Once I started paying a hundred hours for that floor to get that floor done, it went from, it went from, it took six hours, maybe all day long to like two and a half hours done. Now, now he's done. So he's in speed mode and because it's a quick way to motivate you where you're so used to just working hourly like the, the thing man you just hourly is you just feel like this unless you really enjoy what you're doing then hourly it doesn't matter what you're getting paid 
if you're enjoying what you're doing, but it, that's only if you want to do what you're doing. My idea of working for a living would be not to have to work at all and just do what working for a living, living, like living your life and whatever you do in your life, you work for it and you actually want to do it, but you don't have to do it. And you have, you have the ability to, for resources and materials, and you're able to, you're just able to put things together whenever you want. So when I'm at work and, or when I had the people hired, I, I did a rule of thumb. I said, if you get there at, say, 7 o'clock, and you punch out at, at 3, it's your 8 hours. If you take a lunch, if you don't take a lunch, it does, I eliminate that lunch thing because you have to stay an extra half hour because you're taking lunch. Whatever. It's just my way of... I've never really been too much caring about the lunch thing and so I have that mentality and so I, I do it myself with the job that I'm at so it, it comes down to the point of when you get there at 7 7 14 if you get there around 7 14 don't worry about it. Just clock in for seven o'clock. Not a big deal. If you gotta leave at two forty-five, it's cool. It's cool. You um, just count it eight hours. The fifteen-minute interval. So basically, what it does is you gain like a half hour of time. You could gain a half hour a day of your time by doing that and so that that kept it that kept in my mind when I work wherever I'm at putting my hours in I've been working for my boss now for the past two years it's hourly I'm used to being a sub and I'm used to if I don't get the job done I don't get paid but I'm, I'm also used to not getting paid no matter how much money I made, it's, I wasn't getting paid consistently. So it, and then having all those people working for me, which I did enjoy because I, I was able to put so many people to work and it felt great to do that. But I was the one that took on this job that was a new thing for me taking on head on with a new guy. He's, he's new at the remodeling part I'm new at doing it on my own, but I've remodeled for the company that came in, the company bought the place, but he was stuck in his ways and he was really, uh, he really didn't want to get up off his seat. And he always tried to set me up. I knew he tried to set me up, but I couldn't prove it at the time. But I did tell all the people that, that I hired and everybody else and the maintenance managers that I'll, I'm not going to get fired from this job. If anything, your boss will be the first one to get fired. And this is a documented... I had it on my emails, but they're not there anymore. It was nine pages of this information of this guy. Everything he was doing, everything he was lying about. So I understand that part. Even stretching the truth can bother you. And if you're the one stretching the truth, then you become a hypocrite in the eyes of other people. But this guy, I knew what he was doing. Like I know who's running the planet and I couldn't prove it to save my life. But I did my homework. Even my brother come up, Yo, you ever gonna get any work done? I wasn't even supposed to do, do the work. I was supposed to manage the job, make sure everything gets done. And if I wanted to do the work, I can add on a couple extra dollars of what I'm doing so I can make some more money. But I basically became a working supervisor when I was not supposed to be. 
And then by doing that, I had a lot of responsibilities on top of schedule making. And then when people weren't getting paid, like the subcontractors, or because they would complain about it to me, I'm like, I, I can't help you. And then my employees, I was paying them out of my pocket because I wasn't getting paid. I was doing that just to keep them there, to make sure that they stayed there. I held on to the job for a year and a half. After that, I, I, gave, I gave my resignation. I said, look, I can't do this anymore. I, I'm not getting paid by my boss. And on top of all that, this guy has been trying to set me up and here is my proof. So I handed it to the vice president of the company. And it's seven pages of straight facts. Everything I've been paying attention to for that entire, for I started to keep a journal the last year, the last year of the job. And I mean, I was jotting things down beginning, like, but then I, because I kept track of everything, people that were working and the money paid out and, and the, I had to set the schedule for these apartments. And I would usually have like five or six all together or around five all together and then schedule them all out and they all get done within three weeks of a span so there's five of them in that three weeks and then it keeps flowing we did like 150 of them almost one a day so it was a little over a year and a half because somewhere around there but i felt that this guy was setting me up big time because it's so conveniently that the next day that someone need, is supposed to move in the house when they move in the house there happens to be a leak and then the leak leaks downstairs. It leaks on the people that are already living there. So it's inconvenience and them down there. It's it's Friday. It happens on Friday. So I get a call. And sa so Saturday, I got to come in to work and, and take care of this leak. It kept happening to the point of... It was ridiculously obvious. So what I had to do is I had to keep track of stuff. Everything that I wrote down was all about his ordering habits, what he said he ordered, what he said was supposed to be there, what wasn't there. I mean, I I, I could have done his job for him, but I wasn't going to because after the first apartment, he wanted me to give him the information for all the next apartments to get the stuff to order. But I've already done it the one time, made it clear here, this is your job now. He didn't like that. And from that day on, he tried to set me up to get me to fail. And he didn't no matter how bad he tried he could not because i promised these people both of my brothers my stepmom my brother-in-law my nephew my my two of my cousins so seven people just off the top of my head i can remember hired them full time every single day there was work for them to do for a year and a half straight and and i enjoyed it because i had my family with me and i was their boss so but I'm a cool boss when it comes to the people, just as long as you're getting your job done, I'm not hounding you. I'm not checking to see if you're really clocking in at the time that you are. I don't have, I don't have somebody hired clocking in. I don't have surveillance. I, don't, I, I can't watch and see if you're literally doing that or not. But if you're not, and if you're rounding it off, but that's, and if you stretch it a little bit here, so, look, if you're getting the work done, if you are getting the work done and you're still getting paid, check, you're good. Check, 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 check. Is my boss selling these houses? Uh, yeah, they're non-stop. They're just they they won't stop buying them up, and but they're they're crammed up, and that's what it was when I did the apartments because it wasn't because of my schedule and I was doing it the right way. The the Goliath whose name was David, he was the guy that 
and he knew the tricks of the trade. Look, he, he was from the inside. He had inside knowledge. He, he knew where the pipes were. He knew how to poke a hole. He knew he had all the tricks of the trade because that was his land. I'm the new guy. I came on his land. That's his land. Yes, a new company bought it over home properties, but he was there before home properties bought it over, so he's still running stuff. I'm in there as the new guy doing the remodeling, and this is the first time he was doing the remodeling in these apartments. So I was using my knowledge and he was using his, but he didn't want to do his job. And because I was telling him, this is on you, this is, this is your job. I mean, I'll help you with the first unit, but don't you know the second unit was the supervisor who was moving in? The second unit that we did, the supervisor's moving in, a nice lady. The day before she was to move in, the ceiling collapsed in the bedroom. Wow, that's amazing. How did that happen? So it's a, for some reason, these, these bad things happened at this job immediately because it was a bad omen from the gate that this guy has, a, has it out for me because I wouldn't be his puppet. I just wouldn't do it. I'm there to do my job, not yours. It's, it's, it's bad enough that I don't even get paid from my boss. It's like I gotta hound them for this money because I gotta pay these people. I gotta pay my, my rent. No matter how much money I made that year, which was a good amount, I never had a dime because I was constantly in the negative trying to pay people out of my pocket to keep them working. It's not a way to run a business, but that's how I, I still was successful with it, but it was extremely difficult. Now, to prove that the guy was against me, uh, after the roof collapsed in, and I had to go and fix it immediately, and, and it's like, gee, great, that's a, what a wonderful way to, you know, your first impression with the supervisor that now she's going to think, my God, is the roof going to cave in on me? I, she might be paranoid about it, which is a, which is a demonic spirit that the guy had, so conniving, but so to your face. And I can only imagine what he was talking about behind my back. Those times, I would love to be like clacking you guys that can listen, surveil, take note of every single thing that happens in someone's life. I would have been very, uh, it would have been very interesting for me to hear what he was actually saying about me. It would have helped me, you know, know to know that I was I was right about him. But I gave seven pages of straight facts. I gave my opening statement. I gave my closing statement, and I handed it to the vice president. And I said, "I am out of here." And here is everything that this guy did. And um, if you want me to come back, it's I can't work with it, him anymore. I can't do it. So I gave him the information. The evidence that he was doing exactly to the to the T what I said he was doing is the fact that they fired him about three months later. Might have been six months tops, but a, a time period between three and six months, he got fired. I didn't want him to get fired initially, but he definitely deserved what he got because he was trying so hard with this demonic spirit and he was controlling his three maintenance managers. And I felt bad for him because they remind me of YouTube agents that are controlled by the puppeteer, up, up, I mean by the puppet master up at the top because he, he has the authority. These, these people were like scared of him. Mind you, he's about 350 pounds big dude and you can tell that that spirit was just, he's just so ah, he knows he knows how to get you back 
Oh, he knows how to get you back. So with him getting fired, I eventually went back there and did some work. And on top of that, the other maintenance manager at the other job site that recommended me to go to that job, uh, I, uh, I wound up getting him into that job as well. And he only lived five minutes away from the job that I left and the Goliath got fired from. So it was a perfect way of, and on top of that, the job that he took over that I was at, it was called Devon. The boss that I had that wasn't paying. Should this tactical zoom lens be made illegal? This is the first reason. He was gonna take that job from us. He was just gonna he was gonna call in his own subcontractors to do the remodeling. But he gave me a chance with my first with my my first apartment. I handled it the way I needed to. It got done. This is before I went to the David and the Goliath job. This is what got me to David and Goliath job. The guy's name was Tom. He was the maintenance manager and a real decent human being. I I really appreciated this guy. And because he's straightforward, he knew how to tell you to go f yourself, the kindest way imaginable and I told him that I, I let we laughed about it because he said it's like an art uh, so you, you because he he's he, he he knows how to do his job right so I appreciated that about him referring me to take on the other job and then I did and then once I got uh, Goliath out of that job for trying to get rid of me then I got Tom in there and he only lived five minutes away, which is, it worked out perfect. One hand washes the other. I went back back there, I seen them, shook their hand, and they were glad to see me. And when I talked to the maintenance managers, I'm like, look, man, I, it's all good. And I knew that the little guy was the one poking the holes in the pipes. I knew it, but I hugged him and shook his hand anyway. And I said, How, how's life here? They're like, oh man, it's like heaven. It's like a piece of heaven. Like they literally called that place heaven. If anybody has ever had problems with people at work trying to set you up, you know exactly how, how I feel. Whether you're at, on YouTube, you got people setting you up, you know exactly how I feel. I come back to the job like six months later, maybe eight months after he was gone. And it went from hell when I was there because it was a nice little piece of heaven because it felt good to have these people working with me. But man, it's like, I'm trying to enjoy that. I'm trying to enjoy my nice new truck. It's comfortable driving back and forth to work, a 2014 Dodge Ram. It's, it was so nice to just drive that because I drove many, many miles. And to be able to be my, my brother's boss, my cousin's boss, my stepmom, my brother-in-law, I'm also helping them out too. They're getting, and my brother-in-law and my stepmom moved into the apartments there. So I got them a new home. So it made it easier because my stepmom was the cleaner and my brother-in-law was helping me manage, but he had a drinking problem, which eventually got him fired. I made the effort to make all of these people's lives better that, that I'm around. While my life is being made a lot more difficult, way more difficult than it needs to be. I'm just there trying to do my job. Going back to that place, being called a piece of heaven after I left, I didn't even I didn't even get to enjoy the heaven that I created at that job site for more than a day because I went back and did some work for that day. 
a year and a half of this satanic spirit that runs this place. Whatever this is, I don't care. You, you, if it's, you can make it like it's YouTube, or it's a job, or it's your home life. When I was with my kid's mom, same thing, same thing. Jail was my escape. Jail is where I was free. But I missed out on my son, two and a half years old, which broke me in jail. That's what broke me. From that point on, I've just been trying to eliminate things as, as they come. Sometimes I slip up. Sometimes I still don't do the right thing. Sometimes I still sin. I need forgiveness. Sometimes I need to make it clear that I don't act like I'm perfect whatsoever because nobody, obviously nobody is. But I don't sit there and pray out loud. In my heart, I know where I'm er erring at and I know where I'm stretching things a little bit. And I know how I'm trying to rationalize it in my own head. But by that place having a a heavenly feel from what from what it was what it what it was and then what I created after putting in my work handing the vice president of the company here this is what your employees doing that got him fired it's a fact it's true he got fired and he got what he deserved and by me being there I rearranged how that land was being run by the landlord that was not complying with the law of God. Like he would not not just a, a little lie of a, a little time slot lie. Not something simple like that. I'm talking about vindictive. I am out to get you. I am lying my ass off and I am going to take you down. That is what that guy's spirit was. I got him out of there. Everybody that there was, they were freed up. They were like, oh, like big old hug, like Robin. Hey man, no problem. I created a piece of heaven for you guys. And then stepped off and never came back. Came back once and that's it. A year and a half of going through hell, opposed to only enjoying one day of seeing like my fruits, it is what I experienced when I went back. Which brings it to a parallel today. What am I doing on YouTube? Some people ask me that. What am I doing? I'm trying to do the same thing. But here's the only difference. Well, not the only, but I don't even get paid. I don't have to worry about hunting anybody down to get paid for hopping on YouTube. I got some change. I got some money for that Walmart video. Well earned. Monetized for about a year and maybe two years. About average 250 a month. That was a nice little nice little thing. That's, I mean I appreciated that. And but then I became unmonetizable. I can see why, I get it. But I don't do this for money on YouTube. I'm doing the same thing that I that I was doing when I was at the those apartments. They were old apartments. They needed to get gutted and remodeled. Fresh drywall, fresh cabinets, fresh trim, fresh paint, fresh tiles, fresh, 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 fresh. 
Those houses were nice. When we were done with them, I stepped back. I'm like, it's nice, it's nice. Even though it was difficult. Took some pictures. Like, man. They look good. And it felt good to get them done. It felt good to be around my, my family. It felt good to manage and get it done properly. It felt good to know that I'm going to defeat this, this Goliath over here when I'm done. In the meantime, I just got to focus on what I'm doing. I, I'm not... I, I wasn't concerned about getting um, him him held responsible. I just focused in on my... It was kind of cold in here. I just focused in on my... Uh, freaking shivering. It must be getting colder. I just focused in on doing my job. So I'm just trying to do my job here, but my job is free. There's no money in this. I know it's being appreciated by people. And I also know that there's some that just need me to come clean with my my hours at work. Sometimes, Heavenly Father, please forgive me. I stretch my time at work and there's times where nah, maybe I didn't work eight full hours. Maybe it was like seven and a half. I mean, maybe I didn't put that much effort into the job. And maybe I'm just losing interest in wasting my life. The only reason why I'm even at that uh, this situation of having to work for a living is because of I have this problem with wanting to take care of people. But with my means, with my ability that I have, my, the money that I make, it goes to the rent, it goes to the, to the payments of the bills, and then there's really not much left over. And I've been doing this for eight years in this house. I moved in here so my stepson and my son could go to the third top rated school district in Pennsylvania, which is either CB South, East or West, whichever one of them is ranked third in, Pen in Pennsylvania they were able to go to that school. I had to pay a high, a high rent to be here. This rent, $1,840, $45 a month. It was at 2000 and it's a four bedroom house that I don't need anymore. But COVID kind of kept me here and kind of st stopped. I wanted to leave last year because my kid graduated. I don't need to be here anymore. I need to downgrade. The problem is that rent. It's the highest thing. So I put it out there to my boss that if he would want to buy a house and I live in it and I remodel it as I live there for the year and then sell it at the end of the year because he said he doesn't need to make money. And a lot of people are like that. They don't need to make money. They're there to help people. So the only reason I'm actually working for real like this is because I have to. I can't really take the time off. I'm I'm trying to I'm trying to gather like right now it's 11:03. So maybe I'll go to bed at 12. I'll stop rambling at 12 and try to get my points out. I've done a lot of work for free on this YouTube platform and while going to work support my family day in and day out I get a vacation a year and five sick days every other time every every day I'm there 
So for the past two years, it's like 700 days of working and then doing this. And as much as I do the videos and research, I, I, I need time to relax if I can't because it's time to get up and go to work. And when I get off, I have a two day weekend. I seem to really appreciate Saturday because, and Saturday night, that's my free day of, I feel like I, I, there's no time limit. And then uh, it's back to work, same thing, same thing, same thing, same thing, same thing. COVID, COVID, COVID. Everybody's doing their thing now. It's What I desire is to not have to work for a living, just like everybody else. But not just because you're lazy, if I can do this and I don't have to leave the house, I'd be perfectly okay with that. If, we, if we're on a five month lockdown and my bills can be paid, I could, my goodness, that would be like heaven. My wife would go through it because you know you're stuck in a specific spot but nah I, I whatever order order stuff stay home if that's what needs to be done I'm fine with that but I can't do that because I have I have a job and I got bills to pay and they don't wait they don't nobody pays them I, I pay them it's my responsibility I pay them so I know that there's this work that when you put in, it's going to be recognized by somebody. It might not be the top person, it may be the top person in the end, but it's going to get recognized some way or another. I don't have to worry about it. I don't have to focus in on who. I just know that God, my father, the one that I cried out to when I was in jail and he saved me from myself. That's my father. He doesn't live in a literal land up there. He's not up there. He's in here. He's in here. So I cried out to my father that's in heaven. The one that knows what I'm doing more than anybody more than any surveillance that's out there my father that's in heaven knows exactly what i'm doing what i ain't doing who i am who i ain't so when you're like when you're stuck in a in a confined place you learn how to communicate with your creator and then you start going over the things you've done you start feeling bad about it and then you just like oh, I'm sorry God and you know how I'm sorry I'm just... it's not like dear Heavenly Father Lord I would like to come to you today to please forgive me for my sins of it's not realistic it's not how you it's not how you talk to anybody that's that's like a scripted feeling and then to learn just with common sense on YouTube praying out loud and praying you know do this do this do that pray out loud you don't have to do it but for the sake of the people that are watching I understand that you need to hear me did I do anything wrong? Do I ever do anything wrong? Well, I don't focus in on things that I do wrong because I'm usually not doing anything wrong. I'm just going about my life doing things the way, treating people the way that I would want to be treated. Working at an establishment the way that I would hire somebody. So have I stretched some hours? Yes. 
yep, I stretch some hours. But I also look at it as there's other times where I'll have the mindset of working nine hours and not taking a lunch break and only charging for eight or working eight and a half hours, not taking a lunch break and only charging for eight. And I've done that the past couple the past couple bills I would subtract some time and I'm so I get to the point where when you know that even if you're not being surveilled even if I'm not being surveilled but something reminds me of what I'm doing wrong then then I have to then it's gonna it bothers me so I need to talk about it that's what I'm doing this is what the whole reason why I push record I know it's a long video because I don't have a time limit now but I think it's important that I get this part out because it's about praying out loud and it's about it's about the misconception of scripture as well but when you pray, when I pray, I, I it's in my head. Like this is where I get my information from. The, my father that's in heaven is the same father that you have when you have a strong, eager desire to find out what the truth is and just hold people responsible. Now I tend to, it's because I'm not really bothered by it. Nobody's really saying anything. So it's like, all right, well, I'll just, you know, I don't really feel like, I only feel like working seven hours today. Maybe I'll put eight. And maybe next, next week I'll start Monday off. I'll work 10 hours on Monday and, and I just won't charge for those two hours. and. And just kind of take, give and take, depending on how you feel. Because there's times where I get all this work, this work done, and it's like 12 o'clock at night. Yeah, I want to get to work early because if I get there early, then it's more of a motivation to stay a little bit longer. So if I stay until five, I get there at seven. It's already ten hours. I can always make up for these days of. If I'm overcharging for the hours that I'm that I have at work, and and then there's there's times where I just want to sleep in a little bit longer. I, I just want to get a little bit more than five hours sleep every night, so I'll get it to six, set the alarm, and then let the I'll wake up. When the sun comes up early, it's easier to wake up and go to work. But this is just, these are just the reasons, like my mindset behind why I'm doing it. I just want to talk about why I do these things that I might not have thought they were such a big deal because nobody's saying anything. But I think when your boss is, you know, my boss's son, I think when he holds my check, because I'm used to getting paid every week. That's the reason why I took this job. You get paid every week. So he's been holding my checks. Now it's every two weeks. It's not really consistent of of when I... So what would be the reason behind it? So I started thinking, I know what it is. I know what it is. You have the guy that's paying attention. His job is to actually write down what I'm doing in the day, what time I get there, what time I leave, what time I go to lunch, what time I clock out of lunch, come back from lunch. I mean, obviously, I've done some videos in a day. I've done like an hour or an hour and a half of videos down at the art museum. Obviously, that was my lunch break, right? So when I go back to work, if I put in for eight hours, well, did I really work eight hours? 
No, I didn't really work eight hours. But I clocked in for eight hours, didn't I? Father, forgive me for lying. Because, is it a lie? Well, yeah, I mean, it's not something that you're looking at like it's such a big deal. Especially when your boss tells you he don't even need to make money. All these things are... You don't really need to make money. I, I Yeah, I'm, I'm not a freeloader, but... I don't know what that feels like. I've always had to make money, and I never was able to relax. Like, really ever. Since I started as a carpenter. But I appreciate the, the, the work that I, that I get. And the work that I had, the jobs I have. But when you don't really need to make money, it's not... Again, I'll try to justify it as, well, I'll just work an extra hour tomorrow and I won't charge for that. And I'll, and I'll start taking, I'll start taking, giving back what I took. It's the only way I can reverse something as, it can be, it can seem like it's petty, like this is petty for people. My mom made this for me. It's just a blanket, but I made a rope it, it may seem like it's a petty thing but it's a lie so father forgive me I lied I lied who hasn't lied in their life <laughs> Jesus of course well I'm not Jesus so there you go because Jesus was perfect Jesus lied I mean he lied down in a tomb yeah yeah that's right he lied down in a tomb that's the only lying that, that Jesus did but it's stretching the truth and yet I don't like being lied to not at all so I'm sure my boss doesn't appreciate it. I'm sure. I'm sure his son doesn't appreciate it. But I, but they're not saying anything to me. This is the thing. This is what I. This is what I know in my heart now. They're not saying anything. But they're keeping an eye on me. But see, I've been working with my boss for two years now, and at the end of. At the end of this year, when he gave me a thousand dollar bonus, and he said, you know, I thank you for all the work you've done. You do, do a really great job. I appreciate it. I mean, that was only a month ago. Maybe I slacked since then. Maybe, maybe a little bit when not slack, but well, I mean, yeah, the job's not, it's just not interesting. I honestly, the job's not interesting. It's, I appreciate having it because I don't have to stress about getting paid like eventually I will I'm used to not getting paid at all for months so two weeks is nothing they think that's a punishment for me adding a couple extra hours a week big deal what like maybe a hundred bucks a week might be extra but it's not that that's not the point the point is it's not exactly what it needs to be therefore if it doesn't line up, all right, I got to admit it, it's a lie. I lied. Sorry, Father. In heaven. In my head. Will you forgive me for lying? So, you know, God knows what I'll do in return is I'll make up for it. 